Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I am the host of this program. You can catch all of our ThinkTech Hawaii shows on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's Facebook and a YouTube channel. Today we have um, Leo Asuncion, which is who is the chairman of the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission to, on our show to talk about renewable energy and grids. So Leo, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kathleen. A uh, pleasure to be here. And, um... and I appreciate you being here since I, I know I mentioned to you that I've, I've seen you on another Think Tech Hawaii show. So we love you so much that we have to ask you to come back on various iterations of Think Tech Hawaii shows. So thank you again, <laughs> Leo. If you could introduce yourself to our viewers, we know you are the chair of the Public Utilities Commission, but you can go into more detail about your background. Yeah, um, um, you know, I became a commissioner about three years ago and was named uh, as the chair just this past July. July 1st was my first day as the chair. Um, basically, I'm the you know de facto head of the agency, although we do. Um, a lot of our administrative uh, side of the house is is done by an executive officer that we have on staff. Uh, but we also work as a team. We have three commissioners in total, and we work as a team to for every facet of you know administering our agency as well as the decision making. Um, background: um, I'm, I'm basically a, a planner, an urban planner. Uh, that's my background. Uh, but I have worked in different state agencies um, throughout my 30-year career, 30-year career as a as a planner. Um, also had experience working at uh, Hawaiian Electric, so I know the, the electric side uh, as well. But then um, ended up here at the PEC, um, uh, appointed by Governor Ige um, to to make sure that. Um, you know, we we regulate a, a lot of a lot more people than the electricity sector. So um, I'm responsible to make sure that we're always keeping those other um, regulated entities in mind, um, as well as you know doing the work on the electricity side. And you launched into my second question, Leo. So the Public Utilities Commission regulates public utility companies in Hawaii. I know you already mm -hmm. talked about electric companies. What else does that include? So we also regulate uh, water carriers, which is includes uh, Young Brothers uh, and a very small um, shipping company. Well, they, they both ship property and people. Uh, it's called Honoheke. Uh, they run between Maui and Lanai. Uh, so we regulate those are the water carriers. We also regulate motor carriers, uh, which is usually your tour buses, your moving companies, um, you know, thing, things of that nature. Uh, doesn't include Uber, doesn't include taxis, right? It's more uh, the larger uh, companies that kind. Uh, so think Roberts Hawaii, but even if you see like a small mom and pop limo service, we also regulate them. Uh, the other that we, uh, the other two areas that we regulate is private water and wastewater systems, right? So this is not the municipal system, not the board of water supply, but you know the small private ones that might be in a subdivision somewhere, right? And 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 so we regulate those those companies altogether. Uh, there's about eight, 1,600 plus entities that we regulate so some bulk of, of it some on of the, the, sorry Lee, i didn't mean to interrupt you but you were yeah. talking about water so what are some examples of those places just so people have an idea uh so uh one is where, where i live out in east honolulu right we have uh hawaii american water uh that provides uh sewers the sewer uh or the wastewater system in east honolulu so we would regulate right that company. Uh, Hawaii American Water also has right different uh, water and wastewater systems throughout the state. Right, they're small. They might only you know service you know 
a hundred to a thousand people, right? Um, so, right, they're they're not on the like the county system or the municipal system. Got it. And then you mentioned the board of water supply as well. So, and um, I think you're right. Some people might think that they are the entity that regulates uh, some of those that you just mentioned. So, what is the difference between the PUC and the BWS? Well, the the water company, those are the municipal systems, right? Got it. So they govern they govern themselves, right? So we would govern everyone else that's not on the municipal. So on, on any island, right, there's a there's a water supply department, and there's also right sewer, sewer or wastewater pro provision systems that are owned by the by government, by city. Um, and so we don't regulate those folks. Got it. And thank you for making that clarification. Let's launch into the conversation on renewable energy. So I know you, you're fairly passionate about that. And we there is the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative that has the goal of um, transforming Hawaii's economy so that 95% of our energy comes from clean energy. Um, what are some ways that you've seen or maybe what initiatives are the PUC involved in to be part of that movement towards clean energy by 2030, which is coming up pretty soon? Okay. Well, that has been updated, right? The goal is now 100% of generation in the islands uh, have to come from renewable energy sources. Uh, and that needs to be done by 2045, right? Uh, on top of that, there is now a net, a carbon net zero, right? Uh, goal by 2045. So that's that's the parameters that we're working on now. Um, and you know, renewable energy is everything from the typical solar, wind that everyone knows, but it also includes things like biogas, uh, biomass, right, biofuels. Um, it also includes uh, water if it's in, you know, wave technology or ocean technology. Uh, also includes ocean thermal conversion. So there's small, right, there's a, there's a pilot project uh, happening of way back when, right, at, at the host park on, in Kona, um, the energy lab there. And, you know, but now there's these smaller scale uh, OTEC uh, systems that are being tested uh, also at the park, right? So it's kind of scaled down version that could probably be uh, anywhere. Uh, also includes uh, recently hydrogen, right? And if, if the hydrogen is produced from uh, renewable resources, then that counts as towards, right, the 100% the RPS goal, the renewable portfolio standard goal. So, you know, the, right now, if you were to look at the percentages uh, statewide, uh, we're on track to actually meet the 2040 threshold. And the 2040 threshold is 40% of our generation is coming from uh, renewable resources. Uh, we're actually, uh, 2020 was the 30% threshold. Uh, they were well at, uh, I think, all of the utilities, electric utilities uh, on the island was somewhere between 32 and 35 percent. So they are trending ahead of the threshold years. Um, the challenge will be in the later years, right? When uh, what I call the low-hanging fruit renewable resources uh, will already be, in, you know, fully matured, fully, pretty much, you know, that's gonna be the norm, but then we still need more of it, right? So uh, I can I can point to uh, Kauai with uh, Kauai Island uh, Utility Corporation Cooperative, right? They, they invested in solar 20 years ago, right? And right now, um, right, what they're at, they're at 70% renewable for the island, wow. right? Their generation comes from 70%. Uh, they're now doing the next kind of next level or the next harder um, project of a, of a pump, pump storage hydro. Um, and that is very, 
a complex project, it's an expensive project, but then if they get there, if they get that project in, um, you know, they will now go from 70 to a, a somewhere around 85, 87% renewable uh, generation, right? So that's the example. So, right, they're kind of like the poster child. At the same time, they are a cooperative, right? They they a little bit more agile than, uh, say, Hawaiian Electric, right? Who is a shareholder owned, right? So, yeah. so Leo, uh, delve into that further because I did have a question from someone who brought up Kauai as well. How do co-ops work when it comes to utilities such as that? Well, like I said, right, the, the cooperative um, is just uh, its ownership in, right, that, that's the main thing, right? So every resident of the island of Kauai and every business that gets energy from the co-op, they are, they are the members, right? They're not called ratepayers, they're the members. Right, and right, they have a board just like every other, and then the board makes decisions on how, right, the the utility would be run. They entrust that in a CEO to run it, and then they have a full, you know, staff just like any other utility. Uh, it's just right the. There's no shareholder, right, per se. Uh, the thing about a co-op, right, and and prior. Prior to the current co-op, uh, there was actually an entity called Kauai Electric, right, which was a small investor-owned uh, utility, right. Uh, whenever there's a co-op that is proposed, you can't just come in. Uh, you need to have both sides, right, the willing buyer and the willing seller. So, in the case of Kauai, some years ago, more than 25 years ago, um, there was a willing seller in Kauai Electric. And then there was a willing buyer in the cooperative, right, to come in. Um, but the main thing is, I think, right, um, you see cooperatives on like, you know, more rural areas, if you will, right? Uh, if you're on the mainland, it's more rural areas. Uh, whereas, right, the, the traditional investor owned, right, kind of services a, a bigger area, right, has more, more. Um, more customers and the like, right? So um, that's basically the main difference, right? They're, they're, you know, they, you know, KIUC runs their utility, you know, just like how HECO would, right? On each of the different islands. So it's really, you know, their makeup allows them to, 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 to be more agile, right? They can, and, and they can make, Right, investments, they make prudent investments, right? They they you know, and, and because it's at a smaller scale, that that prudent investment um right is more is more defined and then you know what results you're gonna get. So how would how does that affect your consumers? Two part question, how does it affect consumers as far as um what they pay for when it comes to utilities? And is that is whatever is going on in Kuwait, is that possible or is that in the works for other islands as well? Yeah, so what Kauai, okay, before Kauai invested in solar, uh, they actually had the highest rates of any of the islands, right? Uh, electricity rates. And then, right, it did take time. In fact, when they put in the first solar farm, uh, the the rates actually spiked upwards, right, for a short period, uh, and that's rightly so because, right, there there is cost in, right, putting in a, a solar farm, right, and who who has to pay for it? It's the members of the co-op, right. But over time, you would see, right, a reduction, right, in in your rates. So fast forward twenty years, in fact. I think this past April or May, uh, there were a couple of days uh, where the rate, the daily rate for KIUC was actually lower than the rate on Oahu, right? So it did take 20 years, but right, you, you, you need to make that investment first, 
right? And it takes time to cut. Now, could it happen on the other islands? Yes, very much so, right? And I think ECO, right, for Maui Electric, for Hawaii, Hawaii uh, Electric and Light, and Hawaiian Electric here on Oahu, uh, they are doing that, right? They need to uh, now, right? They got a bigger base. Uh, they have different types of surcharges uh, that you know sometimes KIUC does not have. Uh, but at the same time, like those surcharges, I'll take fuel, right? The fuel surcharge that is a pass through to every customer uh, with in Hiko's jurisdiction, right? We all pay it, right? I pay it, you pay it in your electric bill, and 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 it's a direct pass through, right? Whatever HECO, whenever they buy the fuel, whatever that price is, right, that entire price gets passed through to the to the customer to pay, right? HECO has no markup or anything like that on that on that fuel. So, the answer to reduce the amount of fuel use, right, is to get more renewable resources on the system, right? Because that's what you're display, displacing. Now you might not get totally to zero use of fossil fuels because there's always going to be some fossil generation on standby just in case, right? We have 40 days of you know rain and and or no wind days, right? That's not generating to be stored in batteries. Uh, so there, there's that backup, if you will. But the closer we can get fuel use down to zero, which means they don't have to buy that much fuel, which means, right, the cost that's passed through to the consumer is lower, right? So now I will say that it, it, for Oahu, I, I understand, right, that we have limited amount of space. There's competing interests for that you know, open space, right? Be it conservation, be it for agriculture, be it for affordable housing, be it for more commercial area, uh, et cetera, right? And so that's one area where I think, um, you know, the state and, and, and the counties where government really needs to look at what is the priority, right? And to me, right, we have, we have the, the goals that I mentioned, right, of 100% uh, renewable generation is is in law right so um but so is right the provision of affordable housing so is the provision right we do want to double our egg production right how do we how do we make it all work together basically right we need more renewable energy uh, uh resources and projects to come online because that's what's going to drive less fossil fuel use, which means HECO needs to buy less, which means the cost of that fuel, right, the, the pass-through is less, right, because it's all equated to how much fuel uh, HECO currently buys, right? They're also subject to, um, right, global global markets, right? You saw a spike in, we saw a spike in just your gasoline that you use for your vehicle, right? HECO was not immune to that, right? It's still fossil fuel. So they saw the spike in prices, global prices as well. So when you see that, it results in your bill going up, right? And, and there is like about a, a two to three month lag, right? HECO has to buy it whatever they buy today is gonna to actually be used in two months, right? Cause it needs to get here. It needs to go to the refinery, right? And et cetera, et cetera, until HECO can actually use it, right? So if today's price, you know, I, I don't look at the prices every day, but say the price was a hundred dollars today, right? When HECO actually uses that, that's the price that's being passed through, right? To consumers. So. Today's bill, if you got your bill right this month and you saw a spike, you can go back two to three months, right? And, and look at where fuel prices were, 
right, on the market, on the global market. And that's probably why, right? Two, two to three months ago is when, right, everything started spiking. In fact, it started spiking, right, when, right when Russia invaded Ukraine, right? Because that's part of the global fuel supply, right? So uh, yeah. that, that's basically how it works. I mean, we, we need more renewables on the project. Um, and that points to how did Kauai do it, right? How did they prudently do it? Um, and, you know, that could be a model for Hawaiian Electric. Of course, Hawaiian Electric has more assets, uh, aging uh, infrastructure as well. So some of that needs to be updated as well, right? We can't just jump into cards. So there's this, you know, entire plan that the utility has within, I'm talking HECO, right, on how we're going to really achieve uh, within their jurisdiction, their islands that they uh, service, how how did they get to 100% renewable generation? Thanks, Leo. And I appreciate you tying everything into a uh, a global perspective as well. I think sometimes we miss that, right, because we're so focused on local issues. But on that note, let's talk about the grid. When people say, okay, someone's going off the grid, what is the grid? <laughs> the grid what is, is the layman way of talking about the grid. Okay. The grid is everything from the power plant to the distribution, well, what we call TND, transmission and distribution, right? From the power plant, it gets transmitted out to right uh, uh, local areas, and then it's distributed down to the customer. That is the grid in its entirety, right? Um, so when you talk about going off the grid, right, you're taking, you know, if, give you an example, if a, if a condo somehow wanted to go off the grid, well, let's make it very simple. When a customer, one single family home wants to go off the grid, means they're going to produce their own power, they're going to store their own power and use their own power and not rely on any of the electric utility, right? Now, some people might be comfortable with that. Some people might say, you know, I can only have so many solar panels or, right, I can't put up a wind turbine, right? Uh, I can only have space for so much battery. Uh, so I do need backup, right, or standby, which is, back to the utility. So in a way, right, unless you're truly going to be 100% off the grid, more than likely you're going to be more like 95% off the grid, right? Because you still need Hawaiian Electric to be there in case of that day of 40 days of rain, right? And you don't get as much sun and solar production and generation, so, right? There's this piece that everyone forgets when you say going off the grid. But getting back to your question, right? The grid is the entire from power plant to right the wires in someone's house. You mentioned, and I and I'm glad you have a smaller example. What about with larger examples, like landowners? taking you know themselves off the grid and and in the process taking like large businesses hotels or what have you off the grid how would something like that affect the local economy and the local community yeah so you you on that scale right you start to take off uh you know a good a good amount of the load right that's on a on a grid um so now what you're left with is uh, one, uh, the utility uh, who's generating, say it's a power plant, right? They won't have to uh, provide that much load, right? They don't have to produce as much energy because somebody's off the grid now, right? But then that's, that doesn't mean that they just would, that, that may mean that the generators that they have are now running inefficiently, right? Because they were sized to provide, right? 
let's let's use some numbers 100 megawatts right and you take off 30 megawatts you know off the grid right so now your generator that was designed to provide 100 megawatts only needs to produce 70 but that means you're running that generator very inefficiently right because generators are made to run at some kind of optimal efficient range right so taking that much load off might mean that now and you would still have to produce that that 70 percent right of 70 megawatts of load someone still needs to pay for it and it's going to be the people that are still on the grid right the person off the grid is going to say i don't need to pay any any bills anything from say the utility so that means everyone else who's left needs to make up right that cost Right, so that's the impact, right? The impact would be to businesses, to residents in the area or in the jurisdiction where right this utility operates would ha would be left footing the bill, right? Um, and, and that's that's probably the major economic impact, right, on on somebody on a large scale going off the grid. Um, Leo, I wish we had an hour show, but because <laughs> you're delving yeah. into more questions for me, but I know you you do have um, other obligations. And thank you again for the work that you do on the PUC. Is there anything else that you would like to add? No, I, I think, you know, um, be on the lookout, right? there. There's a lot of different programs. I know recently, right, um, you know, bills uh, have been going up. Um, because mostly of the fuel surcharge, um, you know, I I am assured that we and this is more for Oahu, um, right? There, there's a number of projects to come online. Uh, they were all a um, you know a uh, they were all impacted by supply chain issues and the like. Uh, we're seeing those developers. Uh, now kind of sort themselves out and starting to get more parts. We're starting to see the projects start up again, um, right? We just had, for example, uh, on, on Oahu, right? Mililani Solar came online. Uh, they're actually providing 39 megawatts of, of power, uh, which helps the utility. Um, there's another one coming online uh, later, hopefully by the end of this year to provide another 40 plus megawatts. All right, and then we have about eight more projects coming online in 2023 and 2024, right? And, you know, kind of like back of the envelope uh, calculations show that if those total of, you know, nine or 10 projects are online, uh, bills can be chopped in half from what they are today. So in other words, there was a projected $15 increase, right? It would now be $7. So if you do the simple math, you probably need another eight to 10 more projects, right? To really drive the bill down, right? To what it was say pre-pandemic, right? So, so that's what it's gonna take. And then in, in, if you do that, right? You lower again, right? You lower the fuel costs, Right, you lower the surcharge that gets passed on, right? And that should impact your bill. And we get a little bit closer to our hundred percent renewable energy goals. Right. So I think that's that's the thing that you know um, that the public should know about. That 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 that's why we keep doing what we're doing, right? We're gonna have another um, RFP for renewable energy sources uh, on on Oahu, the Big Island, and on Maui, right? So that's that's coming. Um, and so, right, that, that's, the, that's the framework that Hawaiian Electric uses to get uh, more projects online, right? So be on the lookout for that, right? If, if, you're, if you're a developer, right, that's gonna come out 
and I can't give you a, a time frame on when it's going to come out, but I would say soon. Thank you, Leo. Appreciate that. Let's pull up the website. If people would like to learn more about you or the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission, where can they go? Yeah, so it's at tuc.hawaii.gov. And you see the front page there. Uh, a lot of the front page is about, you know, the latest happenings or dockets that the commission is working on. But if you scroll through the top, there's, there's like an about us tab or button, and then you can click on that and you can find out more about the commission, who we regulate, uh, find out who's the, who the commissioners are um, and all of that. Wonderful. Uh, and, and again, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Leo. Well, Your final, final thoughts. Other, the other part is that on the website, we do have right, what we call our document management system. And that is every document that is filed uh, with the commission and in the certain dockets, right? So it would be key if you know what the docket number is, but you can do a quick search on it as well, right? And then it will give you a list so that you can see which one your particular card, but then, uh, right, it has every, document there because it's a it's a it becomes a public document when they file it with us that's actually really good to know and something i did not know <laughs> prior to this so thank you leo appreciate you being on the show today um again this was leo r Asuncion, chairman of the hawaii public utilities commission and thank you again for um, coming on connect with hawaii business we also want to thank jay fidel and the entire staff at think tech hawaii for making shows like this possible today we had eric and Haley who helped us out so until the next time aloha Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.